Hello everybody, welcome! My name is Ursa Ryan and you find me today in a state of crisis. Something bad has happened ladies and gentlemen, something awful, something terrible. The Romans, they're everywhere. And I don't just mean one Rome, no, I mean four. There are four Romes out there ladies and gentlemen, we have to stop them. Luckily, there is a return, a saviour, a past hero of Civilization V. She returns to help us out, it is of course, Boudicca. Now I must quickly say thank you so much to the channel supporters who support this channel on Patreon and Coffee. You're a wonderful people, but not only that, they provide me with some wonderful ideas for channel series, and this was one of those. This scenario is quite simple. There are eight players on this map, this deity difficulty standard speed map, and we are playing on a rather wonderful map indeed. Long term, wonderful modder, friend of the channel, Saf, has created the Orbis Terrarium, the world as known to the Romans, with Italy right in the middle, and then a sort of smudged circular world around it. It's, it's awesome. Our mission is to stop the Romans. We have four versions of them. Trajan, Caesar, Basil, and Theodora. Yes, I know two are Byzantium, but they refer to themselves as Romans as well. If we find any of them on this map, we proud Bretons must immediately denounce them and we may engage in no trade whatsoever with the Roman scum. We must eliminate all Romans from this map. We must completely destroy them before either they win or they leave the planet in order to pollute somewhere else. And I'm calling that the moon landing. So today we're not going for a final victory. We've either We've got to destroy all four Romans or win the game ourselves before they get to the moon. We don't want Romans on the moon, the start of something awful. We must contain them to this planet. To do that, Merix Britons. This looks like a very, very fun mod and it very hugely is in the spirit of how Boudicca used to play the Celts on Civ 5. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're a Civ 5 fan or you like putting the Romans in your place, well sit down, relax, get yourself a glass of water, stay hydrated. Oh and you know that delicious and tasty snack you had, that bag of crisps. Yes, the one you've been thinking about for a little while. Put it down. Don't have that. Eat some fruit. I know what you're like. Yes, I'm talking to myself here. Let's begin. But before we get started today, this is Ursa Bear. Ursa Bear was expelled from Oxford University's Civ 6 program. Sad, alone, scared, Ursa Bear made his way to the fabled promised land, the University of Sankor. But unfortunately, the vampire Lord Sucklington refused to let Ursa Bear attend without 50,000 signatures on his application to enroll. So Ursa Bear travelled. Whilst looking for subscribers, Ursa Bear was trapped by crabs and the evil Crustus the Enraged all seemed lost. Ursa Bear would go no further he had failed. But then, to the east, they arrived. The early bears, freeing Ursa Bear from crabtivity. The early horde marched straight to the University of Sankor, screeching, Huzzah! At the doors till Lord Sucklington had no option but to let Ursa Bear in. He had done it. With the early bear's help, he had enrolled. Thank you, everyone. You really do make dreams come true. Now all Ursa Bear has to do is pass his first year, but I'm sure that'll be fine. Right? Turn one, and even though this is a, and I use this as a very loose statement, TSL map, it's not a particularly accurate TSL map, it is the world according to the Romans, and it is very, very smudged. Italy's in a lot of detail and everything towards the edges are not. This is not a TSL start. There could be anyone at any point on this map. We could have loads of space, we could have absolutely none, but we must know ourselves to know how to fight the world. We are the queen of the Iceni, a tribe that was located very, very close to where I grew up in the UK. Boudicca's kind of a bit of a local hero for me. I had a very, very iconic stance, uh, a war rush against the Romans in Colchester, I believe. The ability is actually really interesting. Clearing a barbarian encampment or entering a tribal village within 12 tiles of your cities grants plus one population in the nearest one. So we can actually bring the population of other tribes and other barbarians into our own lands. That's quite fun. We also gain a military policy slot in all governments. Good. And we have a unique unit it, a heavy chariot replacement that has a ranged attack. It's quite, it looks pretty cool. It also gains culture when it kills things. Nice. Then we go to Sacred Groves. This very much feels like the Civ 5 ability. Woods yield plus one faith and grant districts a minor, that's a half adjacency bonus. So I don't know if the tacks are going to be working today. If I was to put a campus down there, you can see it's got a plus one because there are three woods around it and uh, it, or you need two woods essentially to gain one adjacency. It, it's easy enough. All land units except cavalry and sea ignore the movement penalty of traveling through woods and rainforests. So cavalry and siege, they move slowly and normally, but all of our foot soldiers
soldiers. They can move through woods with no penalty. When we unlock astrology, we also get a through druid. Now, the druid is kind of what drew me to this entire playthrough. It's really interesting. It replaces the guru. You purchase it with faith in a shrine and adjacent land units or religious units gain plus five strength. Now, that's really cool. It also increases the healing of stationary adjacent units by 20. It acts as a general and a medic. And even better, it expends charges to plant woods once I hit code of laws. So I can plant my own woods. It, this is just a really interesting mod. I, I really like the sound of this. Then we have a unique holy site. It cannot be put next to my city center and it must be built on woods. So there are limitations here. However, it has a ranged attack. It gives plus one culture to any charming tiles around it and plus two culture to every breathtaking tiles around it. So that's also really cool. And yeah, the range strike, the walls, it kind of acts a little bit like an oppidum. Similarities with the Gauls? I think so. Speaking of, you know, I mentioned that there are eight people on this map. Well, four of them are Rome. The other three are enemies of Rome. We have Gaul, we have the Phoenicians, and we have the downfall of Byzantium, the Ottomans. Those three civilizations I can trade with, I can ally with, I must be friends. Well, I don't have to be, but they may be the key to destroying Rome fully. So there we go. Woods. Woods are important. I'm planting woods to make our holy sites better. I'm going to move my warrior down in this direction. As you can see, our units can move through woods without movement penalty. So that is a really handy thing. And there's some interesting stuff going on here. This looks like, was that the Lysfjord? Interesting. Very interesting. That is a deer, but it's also, in theory, a plus six holy site because it gives plus three adjacency from the normal adjacency to woods and then another plus three from my sacred grove. So you want to surround your holy sites completely by other woods. And if I was to move down in this direction, I can now settle on top of the furs. Oh, I like that as an idea. Let's do this. This isn't a bad little start, actually. The, the mission is going to be trying to work out where we are. This is going to be increasingly difficult. Lysfjord, there you go. Three town natural wonder, adjacent plots yield, culture and science, and naval units trained in a city that owns at least one of these tiles starts with a free promotion. Oh, so I can't do it from my capital if I settle there, but I could do it in another city. I don't really know if a navy is going to be useful on this map. It's like a huge land blob with Italy in the middle, but we'll give it a go. Right, let's just settle down. Winter, we unfortunately do remove the forest, but as you can see, there is faith on all of the woods around us, and we are now working this extra little bit of culture. That's lovely. Let's immediately whip out a scout and go straight to astrology. Yep, I would like a religion. I very much would like a religion. I don't know if we're going to go work ethic or not this uh, today, but I mean, work ethic seems like it's a good option for a sieve with a holy site adjacency. I can't lie. I can't lie to you. That is quite good. The other thing I'm thinking though, feed the world. I know, I know. It's us, Ryan, talking about feed the world. But if this gives plus two culture to all breathtaking tiles around it, you want as much population to work as many of these tiles as possible. So maybe feed the world would be the better option. Let's just see how the game plays out. You never know. Now in Civ 5, the Celts had the first pantheon more often than not because they used to have an ability that was gaining two faith if they started next to the rewards or just one faith if it was one. It was a very cool mechanic. And as you can see already, this plus one faith means hopefully we will get the first pantheon and we'll have three choice. But this is a very, very quick early game starting Civ as you would expect an ancient era Civ to be. As we pick up the tribal village, we should get plus one population tribal village. I love the fact there was a little exclamation mark there. Oh, that is cute. In fact, actually, instead of going for a settler, yeah, I do want to rush out a couple of scouts here because the more we discover out the map, the more population we get. It's another culture we picked up, another faith. Doesn't quite work to south out. Yeah, yeah, no, this is this is good. The yields are looking terrific. Thick wooded areas are going to be important. City states are going to be spawning randomly as well. So yes, Buenos Aires isn't, it's not a TSL start. What does Buenos Aires do again? Bonus resources behave like luxuries. Nice, early game that'll really help if you want to become ecstatic. Three amber, by the way, is just ridiculous. <laughs> that is so much amber. There's no need for all that amber. Yeah, we've got to figure out where we are on the map. This is so far very confusing. <laughs> It's not um, it's not in the same direction. The UK, Britain is directly south and China is directly north. So the map has kind of been turned 90 degrees on its side. So I think this of course is Scandinavia. So I reckon Iberia and Spain is in the other direction. This is a thick wood down here as well. If there's one thing I know about SAF's maps is that they tend to be quite wood heavy. Is that Crimea? I don't know. It could be. I'm gonna bring my warrior back down in this direction. And do we want to go for another scout? I think I do. I'm not gonna rush the settler. 
Rattler here. We're gonna go for the other scout. I think that's the better option for me. There's a, a three military policy, so we can go for survey and discipline. Lovely. And I'm gonna go for urban planning because God King is already giving us faith that we don't need because I'm already working all of these tiles. Lovely. Okay, my scouts can also move through woods pretty easily as well. That's a thick wood down there. I can already tell where my next settlement's gonna be. But don't forget, we will be able to plant woods at the cost of faith. So we don't really want a faith or a religion that is going to be using large amounts of faith. We want to be producing as many of our gurus as we can. But it could be an option. Oh, another city state. Thirst meat, bit more culture, and plus two culture for every great person that's ever been earned. Nice. Astrology. Here we go. Here is the druid. Even without open borders, this unit can enter foreign territory. It cannot initiate theological combat. It ignores the movement penalty of traveling through woods. It increases the healing of stationary adjacent units by 20 per turn. It grants adjacent land units extra strength and religious strength. And most importantly, I think it can actually remove features. Yeah, because it's got build charges. So not only can it plant woods, but it can also remove them as well. That's just nuts. But what we can do is we can actually create our own holy sites. Like for instance, if I was to plop one, say on this tile, ignore the fact that it's not on a wood. You have to plant it on a wood. Then I could use my druid to then put wood tiles down, which I actually now realize isn't a thing. No, it is a thing. There you go, plant woods. So what you do is effectively just create a system where all of these woods were around and it would go to plus six, I believe. Well, you just have to take my word for it. It's not quite working at the moment, but I think every single holy site we have needs to be at a minimum plus six. That's That just goes without saying. Let's go mining first. We're already working all three of these tiles. If I put a mine down on each one, we'll gain some extra production, an extra luxury, and some tradable goods, which, you know, we won't, of course, trade with Rome. Definitely not. But if we find anyone that isn't Rome, oh, then it'll be important. And again, more population. Uh, we earn experience. Very good. We don't need Ranger because we can move through this already. So let's go for Alpine. Nice. That's just a lot of fun. Well, our unique Cody site. Let's just plonk it right down. Oh, I can't yet because there's a deer where I want to plonk it. <laughs> that is a bit annoying. Well, that means I've got to go for Animal Husbandry. It'll take seven turns. Oh, fine. We'll go for the Builder. Let's get this done. Keep going through. There is a Barb Camp. There's another population there. Remember, every barb camp represents another unit or another pop that we could farm. There was a There's a tribal village right by my city. What's going on? It is the first pantheon, of course, and there's one that kind of makes me go, hmm, and that is, of course, Earth Goddess. Plus one faith from tiles with breathtaking appeal. I mean, I mean, it would be silly not to, right? <laughs> Like, there are other options. River Goddess, I think, would be a really good synergy, as would Divine Spark. We have three mines, we go for religious idols, and that would give me quite a bit. Fertility rights for that three builder to turbocharge my city. The settler's already gone. So, we're going breathtaking appeal, just because now we can get an obscene amount of faith and hopefully rush towards monumentality. That's kind of our hope. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on down there. I think we're going to leave that all alone. Oh, of course, religious units cannot activate tribal villages. My builder will be able to, though. Oh, speaking of, there's another barb camp there. We could hire a warrior, but this is a good chance to use my druid and this warrior. I'm going to sync them up and give myself a plus five, which will make my warrior attack with 30 strength against barbs. Caesar, eat your heart out. Who is this? Ah, the Ottomans. Honored to meet you. You are somebody that will help me to destroy the Roman threat. They'll be here for me. They'll be here for me. I actually do want to make a bit of an effort to be friends with them. So we'll send them the delegation. Oh, did you see that? They had a relic already. My word, in four cities, they're doing great. Lawgiver, keep citizens happy and loyal. That's something we're going to be able to do easily. But as you can see, we want to make sure we settle down towards the Ottomans because, oh boy, they're going to be taking up a lot of space. And I want to claim as much of this forest as I can. I'm going to settle on top of a lot of luxuries in order to just maximize the amount of land I can use. I can't put woods down on floodplain, which is a little bit annoying, but I could, in theory, just stick a few cities down there and stop them from settling towards me. Claim as much of this land as possible. Yeah, monumentality is going to be very useful. We'll see how much they settle towards me. We don't need to be friends with the Ottomans. I, I need to keep making that quite clear. It's just that it might be sensible. Um, putting all of these mines down on the amber, this will reduce my appeal of these areas. So maybe I'll lose a little bit of faith from my pantheon, but I still think it's the right thing to do. Oh, big old flood. More yields have been put on this area. I might ruin my capital's population eventually, but hopefully it won't be a problem for now. Plus one population from the tribal village. Excellent. Go stack this three builder that I just got from that. I mean, five pop capital 
already. Pingal, eat your heart out. And here's the druid, which means, there you go, plus five strength from nearby druid. My warrior can now attack pretty accurately, pretty effectively. My scouts are getting double experience. If you're going to attack me across a river, onto a hill, into a wood, then feel free, you'll level me up without me needing to do anything. Now watch this, I've got 66 health. If I just sit there for a turn, you'll watch me gain quite a bit of extra yield. I'm just going to remove this deer quickly. It'll give me 25 production, and then we'll be able to one turn our holy site like so. Now does it retain the wood on the tile? It does. Okay, that's that's good to know. That means it should actually be plus two appeal from the holy site, unless it's giving more appeal than it should do. No, it's just plus one, so it should stack to two. Yeah, high appeal game. This is going to be very interesting indeed. Vilnius, you're very near the Ottomans. I don't know if that's going to go well for you. Just warning you now. Yep, already there's combat going on in that area. Aha, promotion. Good to know. And the Nimitan is my unique district. It's the first one. It's beautiful. Anyone going for holy sites yet? No, not yet. It's good to know. What does it look like? Let's have a quick look. Oh, it's like a little mini Stonehenge. Oh, I love it. It's so cute. Oh, I like this mod already. And look at this. All of the culture because this counts as breathtaking tiles. Oh, I love it. So our culture's just massively spiked. <laughs> this is good. This is good. This is exactly what you want to see from an ancient era civilization. This is what we do well. I'm going to focus on early empire to get the production towards settlers. And I'm going to rush the settlers themselves. That would be useful. A sixth population inventor is not actually the most unreasonable thing when you consider the fact that, oh yeah, look, 66, six, we've gained 30 health there because I got 20 on top of the 10. Yeah, we should be able to kill this barb camp and get another population into the city. And thank you for the experience. I don't want to stay here for much longer, so off I go. Oh, there's another tribal village there as well. I don't want my scouts crossing over too much here, but also don't want anyone else claiming that one. Whoa, bam, warrior is in. I need more of these druids. These are early game little monsters. I love them. Military tradition, boosted. Envoy has been given to this city-state. So I could discover some more stuff there, or we'll get the Eureka for wheel next turn and I'll pick up Buenos Aires, which I think I'll do as well. And I'd love it if you gave me this particular tribal village. I, I want that into my empire. Thank you. Actually, this might stop the Ottomans from expanding into this area. The barbs might actually act as a bit of a block here, if we're lucky. We'll see. Okay, mining is there. Bam. Wheel also boosted. Another bit there. So the production is now up to 13. My capital is doing really nicely. Would you like to trade with me? Yes, you would. Nine gold per turn. Thank you. That'll help me to get a shrine nice and quick, because I would like the first religion. By the way, I'm not going to be attacking city-states. Not because it's like optimum or anything, but the way I'm seeing this game is that the Roman Empire is this big scary thing. It's attacking and killing everyone. We must protect the little states. In fact, if Rome dares to attack a city-state, oh boy, I will go after it. I promise you that. Uh, Buenos Aires. Here we go. Before we've even picked up our money, we can go huzzah and explore a little bit further to the north. More woods. Nobody up here. Oh, they are killing a barb encampment and I could pick up a barb horseman if I wanted to. That counts as cavalry, I think. So does it? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, light cavalry. Yes. Yeah, so that wouldn't be able to move through the lands as fast as a scout. So I don't think I want it. Next up, pottery and more population. This is, this is going to be ridiculous. Craftsman. Oh no, that was too far away. Hang on. Was it within 12 tiles? Ah, uh, I think we finally found the point of no return. Yeah, that's, that's as far as my influence goes. Interesting. Okay, so I want to make sure I settle towards stuff. Early empire. Whap that settler in. Thank you so much. And then we'll go for craftsmanship. Give myself the extra mine. Train a spearman. I saw a spearman. Oh, I could get a spearman. See, I've been saving for a shrine, you know, but maybe I just need to embrace the fact that I need to run some holy site prayers and get this religion done. Yeah, what I'm going to do is we're going to go for Amani. Pop you into Vilnius. Pick up the spearman like so. Send these units down to go and deal with these barbs because this settler is going to go down and we're going to try and claim this city first just because it'll put the loyalty pressure on. Oh, actually, no, this one with the amber. Let's go do that. We need more amber. We don't have enough amber. It's quite clear. At some point, the Ottomans will decide that I have a really loyal city and they'll want to be friends with me. I don't know when that point will come though. Annoyingly, the druid does count as a religious unit, so I can't actually link it or, or escort it at all with my units, which, which is really quite unfortunate. I'm having to move it separately every time. Samarkand. That is first meet. Okay, two gold in the capital. That's always really good. Oh no. That's uh, that's red and yellow that I don't like the look of. Oh, Ottomans, are you, are you the bastion between us and the end of the world? I think they are and they know it. They like the fact that I'm loyal. This is good. This means we might be able to make our first friend. Good. Friends with the Ottomans. Now, normally, Suleiman is a brilliant military ally and will love you all game. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that this never ends, this, this joy, the honeymoon period of forever. But we will see. Julius Caesar destroyed 
warrior of conspiracies in the alpine woods and the Senate alike. I know, I know. We are too busy to chat and I'm going to immediately denounce them. Immediately. Interestingly, they haven't actually met the Ottomans yet. I, again, I'm not sure how they've done that. That's, that's quite spectacular. Don't ask. Just accept. Just accept that's what's going on. They're going to give me 20 horses and 8 gold for open borders? All right, sure. Now, this challenge did not uh, explicitly state that we had to perma war. We don't need to always be at war with Rome. We just need to always be denounced with them at the very least. So keep an eye on that one. Let's unlock the wheel for the water mill, but also for my unique unit. I could use a chunk of culture from barb kills. That would be a lot of fun. And alas, we are too far away, even this city, from being able to put population in on me. I mean, I could move a little bit closer. Now, here's the thing. If I move the spawn point, I could, I could funnel population into it, but it would be less useful uh, a space. I don't think it's worth it. I think we're just going to go for this. Plus one envoy. Oh, all right. Let's just claim another city state. Look at this. Got so many allies. Yes, we're all ganging up against the Romans. It's, be it's brilliant. Researching political philosophy. High population city. It's got to be Pingala, isn't it? I mean, I'd love to go Magnus. If I went work ethic and just pumped settlers out now, that would be quite a good start, wouldn't it? Maybe I'd beeline construction and, and double this up and go lumber mills all the way around here. I'm going to go for Magnus. Let's, let's just do it. Let's, let's go for the settlers. Ha! Two golds for my amber. I think not. Vilnius bows to me as well. Golden Age achieved. That was a very delightfully quick start. Oh, look at these Romans. Look at them building their great baths. Oh, awful. Scary. Look at these <laughs> floodplains. <laughs> these are crazy. It's a four food, two production tile, and it's not even good enough for me to be wanting to work. Like, what a start. Oh, where do you think you're going, Mr. Barbarian? Nope. More barbarians. This would give me a galley. I guess that would help me a little bit, maybe later. I don't know. Don't want it right now. And I want my first project stamp. Give me a religion. Give it to me. Actually, what I might do is just sell my remaining luxury to the Ottomans. Unless you want your horses back. They don't want their horses back. Fine. Have this. And now I can afford a shrine, which will just help me get this religion a tiny bit quicker. Stop anyone else getting it before me. It says minus one. It's not a good thing. But we will found the city. Banner winter. Oh, look. It's like the original place, but with more banner. Delightful. And a source of horse. I go horse with excitement for such a source. I believe, yeah, this is still a plus six if I was to pop the holy site there. That means that this city could then put a holy site there. This is going to be quite a quite a precarious little arrangement to make sure that every city can get a nice plus six. But it should be easy enough to do. 65 gold for that tile. You're just going to have to wait, aren't you? Actually, what I'm going to do is use monumentality for my settlers. So I'm actually going to move Magnus across and then we will ping Gala in this city. But it's only going to be five turns until I get the pop. And then I can just print from here, which would be a lot easier, actually. I'll settle there next. If I can settle around the Ottomans, like kind of in this sort of arrangement, I'll be able to get around to Rome and then seal this entire wing of the map off for myself. We're going to balance going quite hard on military whilst also settling like crazy. Okay. Is this Greece or is this Italy? I the, the map is very distorted. Like we're going to have to use a lot of imagination. Hang on. Yep. Political philosophy. That's all very good. Good. If we spin it around a little bit. Yeah. It looks like it might be Italy. Yeah. Hmm. I think running on happiness and settling for now is going to be the easier thing for me to do. And my government comes with a spare military policy slot. So I'm not going to go for oligarchy. It's whether I go for autocracy or not. I think classical republic is going to be better because it gets me my religion faster. There's the profit that I wanted. We've got settlers, which I'm not going to be using because I'm going to be using faith instead. Discipline is still very handy, but my scouts are doing just fine at the moment. But no, I will be killing a barb camp thinking about it. Let's put urban planning in and Ilkum as well as Diplomatic League. Now we need to go down to theology. I need scripture as fast as I can because we want plus 12 the holy sites, not plus 6. I mean, plus 6? It's almost nothing. It's almost negligible. What's in this? Masonry. The boost to masonry and the boost to archery. That's two boosts. Haha. <laughs> Amazing. Thinking in future, we want to put our industrial zones in a place where they're not going to affect the appeal of all of my better things. So if I was to go aqueduct, aqueduct there, it would mean my capital would be able to put an industrial zone down at a plus six, which in theory would actually have plus one from the woods around it. I like that. Is that dammable? I don't think it is, is it? No. So maybe I'll switch that for a dam, which also isn't possible. Uh -huh. Okay, this might be a little more tricky than I thought. Maybe something like that. Feels like a weird arrangement, but, <laughs> but maybe. Hang on, that's better. That's way better. I don't know what I would say. Sometimes my arrangements confuse even me, <laughs> but, but I think we've got that. And another city could go there. Aqueduct over to that space and then join 
join in with this arrangement there. I like that. That's kind of out of the way. It's uh, kind of an extendable fidget spinner. Like this, this strand is a little higher than normal. It should give me plenty of space for all of my holy sites. I don't want too many quarries to be honest with you, but that is a decent tile. So we will get that in. Oh, I was actually thinking because obviously the boost for masonry, but we've got the boost for masonry. Didn't need it at all. Who truly understands what I'm doing? I know I don't. Mm, Spearman's holding its own, which is pretty good. Military tactics has just been boosted and we have our first great profit. I say our first. It's kind of our only great profit. We need no more. <laughs> That's it. Do I rush uh, government plaza? Uh, now this is kind of something I am thinking of at the moment. That would give me a governor. The governor I'd be able to pop into the Magna City to make me uh, able to, well, just basically clone settlers forever and ever and ever. Forever and ever and ever. Wouldn't really synergize with anything. Not in my capital anyway. What else am I realistically going to build in my capital though? That is the question. I want Pingala down as fast as possible. It's just a rubbish location. It's just a rubbish location. Unless I built it in this city, but then I'd have to chop it out in order for it to be anytime soon. I'm just doing it. This feels like a really weird move, but I mean, a perfect government plaza. I shouldn't wait for perfect when just like good would give me such a huge benefit right now. Yeah, look at that. The Ottomans were just about to nip in here, try and steal this barb camp. I saw them. I saw what they were trying to do. No, 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 no. Uh, two population in this city now. This now should jump straight up to three population. Oh no, four. Oh, whoa. You get two population for killing barb camps. Whoa. I don't know if that's supposed to give two, but it does. <laughs> Huzzah. All right. Well, yeah, there's all the more reason to have the government plaza down in this city as quickly as possible. That done. Amazing. Do I want to try and work on scientists now? Is that something I do? I guess actually this city would have a couple of decent campuses around. There's a lot of mountains, a lot of woods to back this up. Like already, for instance, that would be a plus four. As would, in theory, uh, that. Now that'd be a plus three. One. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's get some scientists out. Done. Very strange pickup for me, but I like it. Hang on. Fire started. Oh no. See, I was worried a little bit about when this was going to happen. <laughs> Oh no, don't, don't worry about the fire. We didn't start it, I don't think. I'm just going to quickly pop my district down before it burns down because I just have a horrible feeling. That's not gonna, not gonna be good in the long run. Oh dear. I don't think it makes sense for me to wait until the next era for my religion. So let's just found it immediately. Well, we've got to make that choice. I think for instant gratification, work ethic is going to be the thing to do. Although it pains me to shun away from feed the world. Let's go work ethic. People won't be able to forgive me for don't go work ethic. I can just see it now. What would help me spread quickly? Everyone's favorite dentist appointment with teeth? Hehehehe, <laughs> maybe. Or would we just go full send on faith and go pilgrimage for more monumentality? Let's do that. Let's just go for even more of the good stuff. Hmm, yum. And as you can see, a druid is 150 faith. Oh, we're going to need a load of those, I think. But missionary for now, go and just convert my cities. Make sure we don't lose out on that front. Rome likes the fact that I'm killing barbs. I don't like you, Rome. So, you know, sucks to be you. Oh, look at that. I healed all the damage I did. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. Yep, my the, the actual tile underneath the holy style is, is burning and I'm losing my population. All of this wonderful start I had, I have a feeling it's about to go down the drain. Now it's not ooh, guaranteed to spread because this isn't on apocalypse mode, but as you can see right now, this is choosing to spread pretty far. Yeah, this city's going to go down to one pop. That That is unfortunate. Now it should recover pretty well because we do have a horse tile that is not going to get burnt down that has a lot of food. But yeah, that's that's really unfortunate. Oh, my missionary can't even get through to spread my own religion. I mean, I guess at least the tiles are going to be really good after. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, it, this, this will just be, it'll, it'll probably spread through and then go and set fire to all this land now. Just watch it. Yep, here it goes. There goes my improvement as well. All right, so we're going to actually recover the population in two turns. That's not the end of the world. Magnus, provision, done. There you go. You see, we really did need provision. <laughs> the capital's on 18 production right now, which is pretty cool. Let's get Ancestral Hall to get the three builders. I think Warlord's Throne might be the long-term option for me, but we'll just avoid it for now. I think I, I like the idea of just mass settling with work ethic like that would be quite oh Rome's got great bath how dare you okay and the woods are now not burning anymore which means my missionary can safely pass through oh yeah I mean the yields are going to be brilliant here eventually eventually is the word don't don't think about it until then 
wheel. That's good to see. Um, as you can see, things are no longer on fire, but they're still smoldering and we can now make our unique district, which is lovely. Two population, two population already goes to three pop with that trader. Look at that, ha ha. We can send a three food two production route back to my capital. That's handy. Let's do that, get the boost of currency. Hey, look at this, the start's going amazingly well. We've already recovered to three population. I'm just getting swarms of tribal villages to come and join this city again. They're all just running in and I'm like, don't ask me where the previous population went. That is unimportant. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something you need to concern yourself with. There's always been three people in this city. Ignore the screams. Here you go, trader. Make your way through the flames, the smoldering land. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, I think the fire might actually drift back through here into my lands again. <laughs> Oh goodness, at least, at least, I guess, it'll be an easy conversion for the city because there's no one living in it. Oh, golden age. I mean, this one is quite clearly monumentality. We're set up, we're ready to go. Here is our first settler, 150 faith per turn. 150 faith to buy it at 27 faith per turn means I can get one every six turns. But now that cost obviously will go up. But we'll get this going pretty quick. I'm going to settle on that location first. Then we'll go and settle on the wine. That'll just act as a little buffer. We'll go for this one and then we'll start making our way to the north. Actually, same that I know that that tribal village exists and it is in range as is that barb camp of this city so maybe the cow that cattle is a is a priority tile for me to go and settle I don't know we'll see convert me the city screams convert me yes city number two and I do want to just watch out for ancestral hall if we can finish that off we'll get a three builder from all of this which is lovely scripture that's a lot better than urban planning now Venta has 24 pop uh, production and we'll continue to spread that liberally. Smart hand, can you join me? Reveal some more of the map for me. Ah, barbs. Excellent. Exactly what I wanted to see. And actually now we'll take the galley, which is here, but this will be able to go around the coast and explore a little bit more for me. Kind of keeping an eye on this fire. Did that? Oh, it put itself out. Good. Okay. It's not making its way around the pass and, and hitting this area as well. <laughs> I was absolutely convinced we were going to get roasted there. Okay. Ancestral Hall is finished in my capital, which now means that I can found this city. Ottomans may not like being sort of pushed in here a little bit, but equally, Coria and me, well, neither of us care. Also, we've now caught our second Nematun, and it's finished, and it's plus six, which means we're getting 12 production and 12 faith and all the good, juicy stuff. Oh, it's delicious. It's wonderful. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Radio Tour, Ray, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Charlie Bears, Flying Dutch Burbs, Nate the Great, Alex Frost, Mean Penguin, Interplanet Janet, Mr. Awesome, Frankincense Battlesword, Sleepy Lab, Bookaluke 79, The Nick Man, Bob Loblo, Davalex, Geography Teacher, Juvara. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.